Hi, in this video I will show you how to uh, install an ASP uh, app on a .NET 8 app on an iOS server. So first I'm opening my local, on my local machine, my uh, Visual Studio 2022 development and in here I go to, uh, let's say here, I'm starting it from blank. Now this is my local machine. I will say create a new project and there I opening here my web. Uh, there's a difference to web API. That's the smaller one where it's uh, with, without uh, front end. So simple web. And we start in this case with a Blazor server app or uh, with a, uh, where is it? Um, server app, a Blazor server app, that's what it is, all the same one, these ones run the same. Uh, that's a simple, simpler form how to uh, work. So I'm double clicking on it, so it says it creates a Blazor app. Um, I will run it in my, let's say, yeah, in here. That's a default path. Uh, I go to my repos. I will select that folder. Now I will go to my demo folder. Okay, watch else. Um, I go to my demo folder. Let's say I create here demos. And I'm taking this one and there I say Blazor app 1. So that's a server app. Blazor server app. Server. Uh, now we are starting. Where's my button? Behind my window. So we are here. I'm starting with the next. Then I have a .NET 6. I will run it on .NET 8. Uh, starts with .NET 7, but we will change it to 8. Uh, because 8 is the latest one. So I'm, I'm going there. <coughs> Now I'm in here, I will change, click here on to the project. Come on. So we are here on the front end. Click here onto your project uh, stuff and there to properties. And when you have installed .NET 8 on your machine, then change it to .NET 8. Uh, close that stuff again, then we are uh, simply push the bu start, start button here, start it, and then you will see that it's starting. Ah, come on. Where are you? It comes on here. Here. We are here, uh, it's uh, just starting and it's local host on my machine here in my office. And you see the JavaScript stuff is running. So whenever you refresh that, uh, you will have a new uh, new results. So this is Blazor server app. Now I'm closing it again. Uh, it stops the debugging mode. Then we go to build and we say publish. And under publish we uh, take a folder. So the folder will be in this, uh, it will create a bin folder in here. So when I say now here, uh, create uh, an output, which we transfer to the server, uh, then it will create the bin release net eight, because that's the version and then the publish uh, stuff. So when I start it, then it will be in here. We can see it in here. Now that's the folder in there. So and it's, it always starts in that way and we have to change it uh, here to from portable to uh, Windows 64. That's the default Windows Server. 
uh, you may leave the release and .NET 8. 8 .NET 8 is the uh, current version. That's why I changed it, and uh, by that's the current version which is secured. Uh, so, and then we say publish. Now it creates a lot of files. Uh, we can we can see it here on the bottom. Yeah, and then it says published, finished, and it says navigate to there. So. When I navigate to there, it opens the folder of my app, bin release.net 8 publish. That's my folder. And now that's all what we need. So, uh, and now what I do, I copy that stuff. And I switch now to my server. That's what we see here is my uh, remote server where my websites are. And inside uh, my machine i will create a new folder uh, i will say okay i have here some demos and in my demos i would say okay i want my uh, blazer blazer server what was it blazer server B -b 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 app or something like this blazer server app let's say zero one okay something like this doesn't matter then drop all what you have in there. So because it's uh, since this is a remote desktop, I may drop it in there. So I say paste and I'm pasting the files which I had here in my uh, other folder. That's the, the other stuff. Blazor app 1 and Blazor app 01. Okay, so that's the same. I will do it in the same. Rename it. It's not, near, not really necessary, but it's helpful. Uh, so now on the that's now my place where my physical files are. Now on the left side, what we see there is I'm closing this again. This is my IIS <coughs> server. So when you have a web server, you're installing the IIS machine or uh, or activated by your settings. I don't, won't go into that, but when I go now, when I start my application, uh, you may, every Windows machine have, has these settings and you may activate it. Now, when I am in there, it always opens in this old page. Internet Information Services 10, a little bit old, Windows, uh, what was it, Windows 8 <laughs> from 2008, doesn't matter. But it's a good stuff running. So we have here application pools. That's the handlers uh, which opens that stuff. And then we have sites. And the site is where we place that stuff and where we say where the ad address is. So we always go into the sites and we say add a new website. And inside the website, I will say, okay, this is my new, uh, let's say, Blazor server app. 0, 1, or no, 1 was, it was 1, and now we change to the physical path where we had, where we, ins we installed it. So this was under uh, a web folder, demos, and then I had here the Blazor server app, not, not the www root folder, so simply the, the top of that uh, folder, Bla Blazor server app 1. We see this one. And by default, there is uh, port 80 un, um, unsigned. So this means when you say nothing and get uh, enter the IP in there, then the server will start in there. So uh, we will set the, uh, I have an open, op open website, which is called uh, currently, uh, let's say we take the ni port 9001 for local test, simply for local test. Okay, nothing else. And you see there's HTTP there. Now, when I click on there, uh, it will start automatically. Uh, and when, I, when I'm when i now there, when I click on this application, have a look on the right side, you see browse website. And now when I open, when I click on this one, you will see the browser opens. And now we have the app running there. This is the app which we have seen in our um, on our local and uh, our development system in the office where I am, and this one is my remote PC. Uh, so this is my the web server. 
And this web server has the ability that I may give them um, that I may use an official route. And for the instance, of actually, I have my an IP uh, uh, um, a domain left for testing and doing so. Uh, so I would change here to edit bindings. And in edit bindings, I will say add, and then I say, okay, at the moment, codoku de is available uh, because I didn't set it on, other, on another page. Um, and I would say, okay, uh, the address of this is there, that's the IP. So if anybody outside types this name, the uh, the directories, uh, the web directories will translate this IP to this machine, and the listener listens on that word, and it says, okay, if you're coming in with this, on this IP and you want this domain, then I will open the app, and that's the point. So when I'm here now, um, it will. Uh, I'm not pretty sure if it starts. Let's let's see if it starts, and otherwise we. Yeah, I, I also take the other one. Okay, doesn't matter. I uh, also add an HTTPS format because I'm not sure. And I also already installed some um, some certificates there. So I take my uh, docu.de and it requires this one and this I, I say code docu.de and it requires the server name. Uh, I did the uh, labeling by uh, the certificates it has to be refreshed uh, very often and this is done by a Google uh, service uh, Let's Encrypt and they do it automatically so uh, and they always guarantee that this is the server. So. Uh, I'm saying now, okay, uh, on the same address, use whenever anybody comes in in this uh, address and goes takes a name and but with HTTPS on a, uh, then it should run on there. So now I'm closing and maybe I restart it. Now when I go here on the right side, the 9001, then I see, okay, it's wrong, that's wrong, 9001. Did I say the 9001? HTTPS 9001. I don't know why this is wrong now. And now we have the other ones. Uh, uh, here the uh, nine uh, the HTTPS address. So when I take this one, I see the the stuff. And now I'm still on my machine. And when I'm uh, going outside, so I'm moving now my. That's my browser, my local browser here in my office. And when I type here, uh, co um, uh, this one, code, code docu.de, then I have the same one, but this side is from the outside and this is on the server itself. So the server itself roots, it roots, takes the same number, goes out and goes back. You will see a lot of some, some different uh, things on there if there's some, something going on, for example, uh, 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 error pages. That's the difference. Uh, and I don't know uh, why the, let's see why, what happened in there. Uh, the adding bindings here 9001 should also work, but I don't know why it doesn't do now. Let's see, browse. Something is wrong in there. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't reroute, but uh, what the heck, I will, uh, I will change this one. Okay, we you you never you never <laughs> use this yet. Uh, you don't have it uh, on there. So uh, yeah, and this was a Blazor server app. What you also should know uh, when you do that stuff on the first time on an old machine, then you have uh, first you should first uh, you should install the IIS machine, and you should uh, look for the following stuff. Uh, you need the uh, hosting bundle. Hosting bundle. When you have the ho when you see the hosting bundle, go there, and uh, you will find the current versions in there. So we have here current versions and previous uh, previous versions. Click on there. There's the same link on there, 
and now you see here on the uh, when you're here on the dot this is the dot net 8 hosting service hosting bundle and this one will create okay, let's here go to manually and I do it always by this so to be sure that you get the same take this one the dot net 8 or I also had the dot net 7 on there so take the dot net 8 which is the current version and has a long term support this means if there is a bug on there uh, it will be refreshed so we take the dot net 8 and we have two stuff in here so we have the hosting bundle that's the hosting bundle I'm clicking on there say okay I want the hosting bundle so I've already clicked on this and now I say okay download the unverified uh, file so now it's in there you see this one .NET hosting uh, exe uh, this one and what you also have to do is you need the runtime when the hosting bundle is uh, the ASP.NET core so it says you have an ASP server application and I understand ASP server but the machine the, the code below is this one that's the runtime or the development stuff but you don't need the developer stuff you need the runtime it's a runtime machine and yeah you take the Windows X64 uh, right yeah right so let's ch check again ah no uh, here this one the not the not this one you take this one the dotnet core runtime and there this one is the matching one uh, uh, am I sure I'm sure that's the core runtime now you see that's the ASP.NET core download that one I always have to check if this is the right stuff so this is ASP.NET core runtime and the .NET hosting so click on there activate it so I've already installed it repair all that stuff and also the .NET hosting click also on there install it every everything on there and then the machine should running uh, I'm not sure to be honest I'm not sure do you want to cancel yes I want to cancel if you also have to take the uh, runtime this one that's the runtime and that's the ASP.NET core runtime maybe you also need this one but I'm not really sure if you have this one .NET runtime that's the default run runtime which you also need when you have um, um, a default desktop application uh, in the in the dotnet core uh, application asp.net core there is the um, it's called runtime v2 it's the v2 version and that's why you also need this one so it doesn't doesn't matter also take this one you see I have the here the win and the win the other one it seems to be the same that's the .NET runtime ASP.NET runtime I would also install that and after this you have the ability to see that stuff